Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road, and here's a great way to use up leftover corks from all your holiday gatherings. It's a little mini bulletin board that you can DIY with wine corks. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to do this. It's functional and it can hang on the wall and really hold real push pins. So, stick around. These boards are unique because they've got the little notches already pre-cut in the back. So once your project is finished, you can hang it up on the wall, which either way, horizontal or vertical, which I think is nice. With the sanding block, I have sanded down the edges. There's two different kinds of corks that I have found doing this project. There's the actual ones made of actual cork. Um, and then there's ones made of sort of this weird rubber. The rubber ones I feel are a little bit easier to cut through. I'm gonna take like a heat heat and cut mat and it be like be very, very, very careful, okay? So I'll show you on the rubber one first because that is a little bit easier. At the top, just eyeball it and kind of go with your X-Acto knife or with your craft knife kind of about halfway down and notice how I'm holding it on either side, okay? And once I get about halfway, then turn it flat and kind of go this way. And then you can go to the other side and just repeat, but you've already cut through. So it should go pretty, pretty nice. Now you're not gonna get the, there, you see? Now you're not gonna get the nice, perfect edge because we're not using a machine. These are just hand cut. Um, but even so, they lay pretty flat. Oops. And these are Liberty Bells, which I think is kind of cool. And they, they lay pretty flat, all right? Now, a little bit more careful here with an actual cork. It's the same thing, but this is just a little bit trickier to do. And um, you almost have to, once you get through the top, just hold it on the top and use like a, can you see what I'm doing? Like a sawing motion, okay? It's crooked, I know, but, and then turn it flat and go straight down. And then come back up. Now look at that. I don't know if you could see, but it's totally crooked. So maybe on this one, what I'll do is start a little bit straighter to kind of even that out. And I'm doing this in real time because I want you to see the effort that it, and listen, I perfectly understand if you are the kind, I, I bet the camera's shaking too, me doing this, because I have it attached at the top, so sorry about that. There. Now, if that, if you know your own self, so listen, if it's too much for your hands, some people just have not a lot of hand strength, right? Um, if that's the case, what I've done is um, pre-packaged up some already. Like I went through and hand cut a bunch of them, a bunch, okay? And in each, you can, you can pick up some in the Sandpaper Road shop if you want. And I'll even link like right up at the top of the screen here and you can click over and see what's, uh, how many are left. There's 15, there's gonna be 15 in eight, 15 half corks in each bag. And then I also have the plain boards too. Okay, except these I've already sanded down. So they're nice and smooth, not like this one's sort of jagged. Okay, so if you're interested in doing this craft, but you know you don't have the hand strength, definitely check that out. I'm gonna use some 3D matte gel. This is from Prima Marketing, Finabare. And to get them to stick, you definitely want a, a matte gel, okay? What you probably wanna do is lay it out nice across. Um, get your look together, you know, work on your pattern. Like see on this one, I've got like the ones with the stripes I was careful to go uh, every other one and some of them that have labels and some of them that are plain, you know what I mean? Or on this one, 
um, let's see, I have a I have an extra row up top and bottom, and then the Woodbridge corks, and then I have a, one of Snoop and Martha, uh, and then a Cheers one that says Cheers. So pay attention to the patterns on the corks when you're doing this, and make sure you've got like a nice um, you know pattern before you glue them down. Definitely always start from the bottom and always start from the middle, okay, and work your way through. So uh, all you do is you take some of this and just spread it. And don't worry if it seems like it's too much. Um, and just push it down. That is literally it. Now see how it's gooping out? Okay, just go like that. If you feel like it's not holding down, if you need to add like a, um, like a paperweight or something over top, just while it dries, that's fine. I didn't do it and it and it sat just fine. You could use a like an oversized rubber band um, to wrap around here to just hold it in place. And these are just, I save my big rubber bands that come with, you could see it says romaine, like just that come with your lettuce or that. And even the smaller ones will work. Um, you can just stretch it, stretch it a little bit and just pull it. And it'll hold it nice and tight like a clamp. Uh, while the glue dries. Okay, so just, just a little bit of a tip and trick for you. All right, and I want to choose my papers here. I'm gonna use, for the one on camera, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna use Mists of Toolbox Town, this collection. Of course, you can use anything you have, especially if you're giving this as a gift, you probably wanna consider what the, what the recipient, you know, where they're gonna put it in their house or whatever. So now what I think I'm gonna do is do the, six by six, I'm gonna put this up here like this over top, all right? Which means, how am I gonna figure this out? I'll just show you my process, okay? All right, so if we were measuring, we would want it to stop at, for this one, three and, uh, see how it is. Three and three quarters. All right. We're going to save this little strip. I bet we're going to be glad we did. Three and three quarters. Perfect. See, I could have done that from the beginning. All right. And we'll go right there to the edge. I would prefer to have, do we want more edge on here or more edge on here? I think we want it just like that. Okay. If we measured, it would be five and a half exactly. Five and a half exactly. Five, oops, five and a half exactly. And we'll save this. And there we have it. That looks really good. All right, let's see, what am I gonna use? I think I'm going to use some Distress Collage Medium on the back. Distress collage medium on the back. My palette knife here. Yeah. 
Now, why couldn't I use that on the cork? I probably could. Um, there's just a security that I like with that 3D matte gel. I'm just sort of partial to the 3D matte gel. Now we've got that and we just repeat that same process uh, on all four sides. It, it does pay to measure. So if I measure first, then I can cut and then um, fit it just a little bit more exactly instead of trying to eyeball it, okay? So that did seem to work a little bit better. So I'm cutting out the cat and I've got all the sides glued on here and um, even though it's got like sort of this shadow around it, this decorative shadow and all, um, I, I don't have to have that just because it's there. So I'm gonna just cut out the cat. And um, I also want to lightly sand down, now that I've adhered the, uh, the paper on the board, I want to sand down the edges. The, this is my sanding block. Uh, you could use basic sandpaper. I literally got it in the garage. So I, I find it handy. My husband, I'm sure, doesn't know I have this. But So now when I'm sanding down, the, you kind of go in the direction that the, that the paper is going, all right? So to sand down the top, I would go this way. And then for the sides, you see how, like just all these, that little stuff, you don't want, you don't want the recipient to get that, you see. So we're just making it sort of nice and clean. The same way you would sand the sides of your paper, like on a mixed media thing, but this is even easier because I usually do mine on the edge of a table when I do my projects there. You could also add paint at this stage, which I thought about doing. The other thing I forgot to mention at the very beginning is before you glue down this piece, um, actually before you even glue the corks down, you should make sure that the holes are the way you want them. Hmm. Yeah, sorry I forgot to recommend that. And you're gonna get a lot of um, impurities off the paper this way too with the sanding. Like, did you see that big hunk that came off? Um, I would welcome that. Don't freak out about it because that's the whole point. You're trying to make it so that it lasts and doesn't come up over time on its own. Uh, I did find exactly what I was looking for. Is this not so perfect? It is, uh, just some cording, some, uh, what do they call it? Like a fiber type twine thing. But I thought how perfect to go with like the cat type theme, right? I like to um, go back and forth between the, the 3D matte gel between this and this for just for different things. So we'll, let me just see here what's, what's going to go. Okay, so we're going to do a, a pretty school glue-ish type line, all right, all the way around. I do not want this coming up. Uh-huh. How long will it take to dry? Well, it dries initially pretty quick, um, within minutes, but to be fully, fully dry, I'm gonna leave it sit overnight. These are the scissors I wanted. Okay, I'm gonna start here. Why am I doing this first? Because I want to. I want to do this first. Could you do it later? Yes. I am using my um, 
palette knife to push, push and mush. Oh, this is great. Yeah, the collage medium. This <clears throat> this is a good choice for this for this part. Yes, um, I'm glad I glad I used it. Glad I have the variety um, for different things. So. Yeah, and actually, incidentally, when I was gluing the sides, the side pieces of the paper, I sort of switched back and forth between the collage medium and the 3D matte gel, just because, for no, not because of the hold necessarily, but because of the flow. So, um, yeah, good to have a variety there. There, that looks good. It's going to dry nice. It's going to hold good. Um, <laughs> this is gonna it it looks fantastic I love it I love it look at that perfect that's so cool I could just use my fingers but this is sort of sticky um, and not in a not in a good way. Like, not in a way where I'd be glad I used my fingers. So, I guess I'll just put it down and use this to dry. But the one thing I do like is that once it dries, you can't, you don't really see it um, if it leaks out. So, I do like that. There, see? We should name him. What's his name? Okay, seriously, leave me a comment and tell me what are their names. I <laughs> love to name animals that I just see randomly, like just as I drive by or, you know, whatever. Name these, name these, name these animals. <laughs> Fun. All right, let's add some flowers and our butterfly. Let's start by, we're going to make use, we're going to cut this in half, okay? We need to have a ground for these things. So we're going to put this right here. Now we're going to have some of these be flat and some of them be um, sort of shaped. Why does this not want to, there we go. Ah. Okay. We're gonna add the second half of this one up here. So it looks like it belongs, okay? I have many more flowers, so if I need more, I'll get more. Let's shape this one. Let's shape the butterfly and this one. And this. And let's just put it here. Shape. I, I can't find my stylus. So I'm just going to push with the thing. You could use the back of a pencil. I suppose it is good for you, you know, tips and tricks wise, right, that I can't find my stylus. It just gives it a little bit of life and dimension. Um, my stylus does a better job, but the pencil works just fine. Cut there. That looks fine. I just want it to be up some. Now, hmm. I will try this and we'll see how it moves. I, th I think this is going to hold well for this because this is more what it's made for. I mean, it's made to do, it advertises, what does it say? Gluing, layering, sealing on porous or non-porous surfaces, paper, chipboard, wood, fabric, glass, metal, plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it's made for. I just find it works better, um, you know, paper to paper maybe. Yeah, this is going to be good. All right, this is the this is going to be what they're looking at. 
So we're going to center that right there, like so. And I will put this, ooh, I like with the eye there. That's good. I cut this funny, though, when I, when I open the bottle. I have to maybe fix it. A little wiggle room will do. All right. A light bulb up top. We'll do, I want to do the butterfly last. Come on. What? Ah! Well, that's why we were having some trouble. A big clog. I found the perfect final accent here. This is, it's a little chipboard quote that says, don't wait, do it. And I thought how perfect, because remember, this is a, a bulletin board, essentially a little cork board, like a little reminder board. So, um, this is part of, a just a little add on thing that you can get. It's uh, chipboard quotes, um, nice variety of different quotes for different occasions. And I'm going to put it right here like that. Is that not going to look so good? I just love it. I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So let me do this. We are going to let this dry fully. Oh, wait. I have a big, I have that big gob still. Yeah, I can, I can pull from this big gob here that I had. See? Mm-hmm. Okay. We're going to put it right here like this. I think this is going to be so awesome. That looks really good. All right, I've got some archival ink here. My thought is to finish up even the final touches and all, and then I can let it dry. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm glad I'm doing this. Yeah, that's perfect actually. Uh-huh, just that little edge. So we're gonna do it all the way around. Here's a final look at the finished cork bulletin board. I love the way it turned out. I did add a metal piece at the top. Um, just for a final embellishment and a little bit of like a glossy accent over the eyes of the cats and over this uh, light bulb. I love the way it turned out. I also love how regular push pens can go into the corks to be the uh, actual bulletin board, you know, to, to make it an actual functional decorative piece. Now, let me show you the other one I did. This is sort of a masculine feel and look at how I finished off the other one. This is uh, for a different family member, obviously, and it's got more of a feminine feel. I added some glitter, as you can see. This was a blingy ribbon. Ribbon is in quotes, and it, you could cut it apart into pieces, so I did that, but the same exact technique, same chipboard from the same uh, chipboard set, and a little metal piece. These metal pieces I had in my sash, um, and it just it just turned out great. I did the same inking technique. I love how it looks all the way around and um, very functional. There are details of the supplies where you can get the paper and uh, the glue and the chipboard and everything like that over on the blog post and I will uh, link to that in the description box and in the video. So definitely head over there to check that out. And um, my favorite thing of all is that when I'm gonna give these, I'm going to include these, instead of just some regular thumb tacks, I've got these, look, they're rose gold push pens, and I think it's gonna be so perfect just at the Dollar Tree, and if you don't have a Dollar Tree near you, I'll uh, link to those as well. But of course, anything will do, so thanks so much for watching, and uh, please subscribe to my channel, make that uh, a note that you don't forget, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.